question, second part. Uh, I want you guys to know everything about stemmed recordings, about how I make my music, about how I approach, sorry, how I approach my shows, um, what I do in preparation, and not only uh, what I do, but what my team does, because I make the music and I'm on stage, but right now there's a, uh, people at the office, people at stemmed records, and um, I want you guys to know everything today about uh, the team behind Martin Garrix. And because you have a big team. Do you remember, uh, Marcy, the, the first moments you got that music? What was one of the first tracks in your life that you were like, oh my god, this is so good, I just want to make a career in music. I fall in love with music at this very moment. Do you remember that very moment? I never really thought I wanted to have a career in music, but for me, um, it was when Chesto said us in many interviews, I saw him perform at the Olympics. Um, and my mom, she grabbed me in front of the TV, she said, Martin, you have to, you have to look at it, because it was like a huge thing for us, tiny little Dutch country, that there was a Dutch DJ, part of something as big as the Olympics, and just the music, I think we're all here because of it, it, it triggers something in me, it made me feel something, made me feel <coughs> excited, energetic, happy, alive. Yes, and um, not right after the show, I was like, I'm gonna make music and I'm gonna go tour and do the same thing, but I started doing more research and I started listening to the genre. I bought like vinyls and uh, I, I bought like a cheap, cheap SDJ set and uh, installed free loops on my computer. And I just started having fun. And for me, the main thing is right now, it's still fun. And I never really approach this like, oh, I want to do this, I'm going to do this. I just let it all happen. But yeah, Chesto, um, I think the track that triggered the most in me was Traffic. It was such a minimalistic core progression, but so, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's a cool song. Yeah. It was amazing to watch him at the Olympics. I think that was a game changer, that the DJ was hosting the music for the Olympics and it was never, never shown before. It was, because, like, electronic music, Trans music at the time, it was not that big yet as it was nowadays, you know? Now if you put on every radio station in the world, like one out of every three or four songs you hear, you hear is either an electronic song or like an electronically produced song by a big ass pop artist. So it's crazy how much it has changed. But at that time, Chester being there, I was like, fuck, this is, sorry. Like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> Do you remember that when you were playing around with Fruity Loops, what was the first moment you thought, hey, this could be a track that I can put out somewhere? It was the first song I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, what was really hard in the beginning is I spent so much time in the program and I really thought every single thing I made was great. I really had like a whole video clip in mind with the first song that I ever made to FL Studio. <coughs> And now if I listen back to the song, I'm like, what, the, what was I thinking? But you know, it's, 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 it was part of me, it's like my baby, I was so proud of it. And yeah, it's, it's not a great song, but it, it was the first of many. And then every song that I tried to or put out or made after was trying to improve the quality of the, of the previous song. How did you gain, gain knowledge to become a like, better producer? Did you have enough? I, I, the studio. I learned a lot from being on forums. I was on the Vato forum. Mm -hmm. And um, tutorials online are very helpful. And the most helpful way is just sharing knowledge. I love collaborating with other producers because I can teach them things, but they can also teach me things. And some people right now think like, oh, maybe Martin doesn't need help or anything. Like, I still learn every single day. And sometimes I make a mistake. You know, Sometimes I make a mistake in the studio, and I'm like, fuck, this sounds cool. Or I'm like, oh, this doesn't sound cool for this song, but then next time I make another song, I'm like, wow. Oh, I remember I did that by accident, it sounded cool, what if I do it on purpose in this song? And the funny thing for me is, uh, there are not, no rules in making music. Like, and it's, it's all about how it feels and, and how, how it sounds, the melodies, the chord progressions. Of course, if you're going to go like technical, there are some rules that, that will definitely help, but in the end, you should more focus on, how can I say it? Like a, a crazy producer can 
make something sound good, but in the end it's about the melodies, it's about the song, it's about the emotion, you know, and you can be the sickest producer, you can know every single trick in the world, but if you don't know the basics and if you don't know how to write or like put that emotion into your computer, you're, you're, you'll end up as like a um, studio engineer or something, you know, who just knows everything about the techniques. Yeah, the mops, yeah. I spoke to Diplo once from a radio show and he told me that the major laser track Lean On has this really crazy hook and the hook was originally from another track. So it's an, actually this, this track has three parts of all the productions and the new production. <laughs> you also work with ways and times. Hey, I have this amazing hook from that other demo that I made and put it into another song, that kind of stuff. Well, if there's one thing my team hates, it's me doing that. Because um, <laughs> I feel like it's almost like a shortcut. Like, oh, I have this cool drop, I can put it behind it. And it's like, no. It deserves a better drop that fits the breakdown more. And what I do do sometimes is like I'll have an acapella and uh, I run it on different chords and then I have like another chord progression. I need acapella on it. I'm like, let me pitch this. Oh, this is sick. And then of course I have to re-record it um, with the artist to make sure it doesn't sound pitched. Or sometimes having the vocal, vocal pitch gives like a cool sound, a cool feeling to it. Like uh, for example, like I do, it's a super pitched vocal, and the, the original key from the song was like four or five <laughs> semitones down. Um, but yeah, so that's a choice if you want to have if you want to have that pitched effect. When it comes to when it comes to collapse, how do you work? Do you sometimes just say, hey, do you have the number of this and this guy? Can we call him? Or let's get a studio session together. What's the way? Because I know Brooks told me he went eating pizza with you, something like yeah. that, at a festival, and then he got really inspired what you were doing. Now his career is. Running as well? No, I, I love Brooks too. Like over the course of just hanging out and making music, we became very good friends. And he's, he's amazing. But for me, I choose my collaborators if I connect with them, you know? Like my management can be like, yo, this, this person should be in the studio with them. And like 95% of the time, I'm like, no. <laughs> or I, I want to meet them first, you know? I can, you can't put me in the studio if I can't connect with someone. Oh, it's just friends with their things. Do that. You can't put me in a studio with someone that I don't connect with and expect me to make something that lifts people up, you know? Um, and also, like, the collabs with Khalid. Um, I have a new song coming up with a crazy rapper. And it all goes very organically. I just send a, send a DM. I slide in the DMs and then I'm like, uh, yo, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And how I write right now is, like, I write everything myself with, like, uh, demo singers in the studio. And then I present like a full song to them. I'm like, hey, you want to sing this? We want to release at this moment. Um, because I've also had in the past that I worked with some artists and that the song didn't get released because there were too many people involved, too many ARs. And now like, I present the full song. I'm like, yo, this is all I have. If you want to sing on it, yes or no. This is how the production is going to be. Of course, I'm open to feedback, you know, but it just saves a lot of headache because. Yeah, I, like, I, don't, I like to be like, fully involved with the, with the production and it sound exactly how I want it and then I'd be like, oh, this could be cool for like uh, Khalid or, or the upcoming act. What's, what's the, the process of creating tracks in the studio? Do you have like a few days every week you block in your uh, agenda to make music or is it just, just when you feel like it? What's the creative flow of Martin Garrix? It's, for me, it's just always music. Like, uh, when I'm on tour, we travel with a guitar, and a lot of the songs, like, also High on Life, No Sleep, makes it with Chris and Alvin, I wrote uh, those two songs with them. Like, those songs, they started on a guitar, and we had the whole song acoustically, like, written, and then afterwards we recorded it, and then started putting in, like, like synths and everything, and percussion and drums, and then it sounded electronic, but for me, Music comes at any moment. Sometimes it's a voice note uh, with Area 21. Um, it's me and my friend Major, and like a lot of the songs just happen while we are partying. We just think about something stupid, and, and then we're like, oh, let's make a song about it. And sometimes we release a song, sometimes it's too stupid, but music is about making, having fun. And I feel like if you're not having fun, or if you think too much, you're, 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 you're not doing it right. Like, I make so much music and sometimes I can use it, I can give it to an artist or, or to anyone. Sometimes it's too poppy and like, oh, this is maybe a little bit too not 
not cool for garbage, you know, but this could be a perfect song for this artist or this feature. And right now, also with stem recordings, with the stem studios, I'm, I'm in such a relaxed space. I've, I have enough 128 Martin Garrix songs, probably like 10 or something, that I could put out right now if I just spend like a few more days finishing it. And to be in that position really allows me and my brain to rest and to focus on other things. And some of the best songs were written on moments that you weren't planning it. Like you can put me in a studio in LA, fly me to LA, and like, Martin, at 10 o'clock you're in the studio with this artist, then halfway through the day, you're gonna sit with another singer to write another song, and <coughs> at the end of the day, I'm like, guys, it was a shit day. And my team, my team tried to do it like three years ago. They put me, they sent me to LA, like, Martin, you wanna work with all these writers? And at the end of the week, they came to me like, Martin, uh, so how, how did it go with the music? And all I did was throwing parties in the studio because it was I wasn't feeling like it, you know. And then on the flight back, I uh, I did forbidden voices. So it's like you can't force creativity. You can't grasp it. It's, no, it just has to be there. But long story short, um, talking about how I started a song, it starts with a chord progression. Sometimes it starts with a groove. Sometimes it starts with just like scrolling to different sounds. Sometimes I hear a cappella or I wrote something and I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna take all these chords out, change the chord progression. Sometimes I chop up an a cappella, reverse it, and then like there are no rules, you know, and that's what I like so much. And your, your labels look amazing. I got, I got a new promo last week, a track called Travolta, John Travolta with a disco loop, which is amazing, which comes out. Do you AR the label yourself? Or? Uh, yes. Um, I've watched and Steven helping me a lot um, <coughs> with like filtering through a lot of songs but like before every song he's thinking like hey Martin you like this, you like this sometimes I'm like fuck I heard this song um, Seth Hill sent me a song called Echo and I remember getting it in my email and I was like what the f this is insane so I sent it to Watson Steven I was like I'm gonna play this every single show for the last for the next six months you know and it's like a vice versa. Sometimes we even have it stamped with studios that there's artists working and like, you hear like, fuck, what's this? Or sometimes friends of mine, like Julian Jordan, she plays me songs like, oh, someone send me this. We all work very closely and because we receive so many demos, we are very picky with making sure the quality is always, it doesn't matter what genre it is, because with STEM, the whole vision is that we want to support all genres, any type of music. It doesn't matter if you're a rapper or if you make, like, it could be anything, you know, as long as the quality is good, as long as it triggers emotions, because I love all types of music and so do, so does the whole STEM team. And I don't know, we just want to release cool shit. We just want to, like, whenever the, the label releases a new song, people to be like, wow, no idea what it's going to be. And I like that. If you do the same thing all over again, people are going to get bored. People are going to know after like three or four times. Oh, I saw that coming. And that's the worst. You want to surprise people. You want to have people be like, fuck. <laughs> if I open my email and hear like a song and uh, it sounds like this, this, the last three songs, the same words that I'm like, this is more. It, it like doesn't surprise me anymore. And also like for producers in general, you want to <coughs> surprise people. You want people to sit behind the computer like, what is this? And one, of, one producer does a really great Skrillex. Like, the moment he announces a new song, you have no idea what it's going to be, but I know 100% all the time that I'm sitting like, this what? fucking guy, is <laughs> like, you know? And it's very easy to become and to go into like a repetitive pattern, especially if you know something works. But it's also very important to constantly try to be ahead, be one step ahead. And if you copy, even if it's your old sound or like your previous song, you're not that step ahead. And what was, what was your way of getting the music to the right people, uh, let's say, three or four years ago? Well, uh, I, I got signed... What's, what's a good list for, for... I got signed... I got signed to Spinning when I was 15 or 16, I think. So it's now seven years ago. Um, but I remember the first songs that I made that I started sending out and... I was spending more time in the emails stalking people trying to get my music out there then I was actually spending on, on producing the songs and now thinking after so I'm like how could I possibly send this song to that person at the time if compared with what else but as a producer it's very hard to 
accept that you still have to grow and still have things to learn. So at that time I was so focused on trying to send my music here and there. I was in a studio, I, I worked for like Yes Air as like a Dutch rapper. And, and I tried everything and then I got in contact with um, Kenna G and uh, with Tony Chacha and they were all like part of the spinning, the spinning team. And I just made club music and then there was one song that Kenneth really liked and um, he released it on spinning and uh, it was Bazinga and this was I think 2013, 2014, so I'm, I might be wrong by here but um, and that song went off and like Sam Van Dorn started playing it, Afrojack, like all the main spinning guys at the moment started playing the song I remember like, fuck. <laughs> Because it was like, almost like your baby, you know, and then um, they needed a follow-up. And I was like, well, cool, but then please introduce me to the team. And that's how I got introduced to the a &R. So it was not me sending millions of emails, it's, it went via via. And just networking, trying to get out there. I was in Fata Forum, I made like a remix of um, uh, Enrique Iglesias tonight. And Fata Gonzalez started playing it. And, it was weird, you know, because then suddenly it's not just my parents and my sister who listen to my music, but it started getting played at shows, and even the smallest, smallest light, the smallest support could be the swish. They're like, fuck yeah, I'm not going to stop, I'm going to continue, I'm going to spend the whole week in the no, studio. Not sleeping anymore. No, and, um, but yeah, it's just important to, to always, to not spend that much time on like, sending emails, spamming people, because it, it does not work like that. Always try to get like better every song you make. Try to learn, be open to learn new things. Don't think you know everything. I don't know anything. I don't know everything. Like The six producers, they learn new things every day. And I feel like if you're focused on, on getting better, growing, making, like getting a distinct, distinctive sound, so you're not sounding like everyone else. Because look at us, we're all, there's so many producers, you know, and you want to be different, you want to have something that makes you stand out. And I think if you're focused on that, instead of spamming, sending millions of emails out, people will find you. Like I like, love the guys, the Kassana stamped. It was literally by accident. Like Osrin, um, is an insanely talented, crazy Swedish producer, producer songwriter. Um, he made a remix of So Far Away, posted it on his SoundCloud as a free download and then my team found it, they sent it to me like what the fuck is this? And I started playing it live and then he was with me in January for a month long, joined me on tour because I wanted him to learn to see everything and we made crazy music together. So it all happens like organically. Don't force it. So I'm trying to say And you were you were in school, right? When you were like producing a lot of music and uh Coincidentally, I, I spoke to one of your old teachers, mm. and uh, they, they said you had like a conversation with like the, the, the school teachers about you leaving school <laughs> a bit earlier to focus on your musical career. Yeah, I, and he said, uh, Mark, his name is Martin, maybe uh, you still know him. He said, well, we had all the trust with Martin that it will work out right, because they, they, they knew you were so passionate about it. What's your golden hint for aspiring producers who are still in school but want to make finish school? <laughs> I might sound like a, like, like a parent, but school is so important, not, not only for, for, for learning things, but also for learning things as a person, like um, hanging out with homies, growing and, and learning new things. And for me, it was, it was a very risky choice, but I, at the time, was signed to Spinner Records, and I was doing a five, um, say, five Fabio. So when I went to my parents, I was like, yo, mom, dad, um, I really love making music. Can I switch schools? Can um, our MBO? They were like, what? The, are you out of your mind? You know? And then what helped a lot was all my teachers, they, like in every school break or whatever, they saw me make music. So even my teachers were like, Martin can finish the school but he will not be happy and we see how much energy he gets, how much happiness he gets from making music and I made a deal with my parents, it's like, they were like, you know what Martin, if you're happy, we're happy, but please finish the academy, the Hermann Groot Academy, 
Um, and, if, and then I said, if nothing happens with my music, it doesn't matter. I'm super happy I could, I could take this leap. I could try this. And, um, I can always get my certificate for the Fabio with the uh, Dill Certificate. I don't know how you say it. So these school terms, I don't know how you say it in English. But I basically told my parents, okay, I'm going to do it. Um, I, it really feels good. It feels like it's the right move. And backed up by my teachers from the old school who said that, I made the switch and that same year I uh, released Animals. So then we were going to the next problem, it was like, fuck, I'm getting booked for all these shows, but I'm, I still have three more years left of, of school, of production school. And I graduated the school and I'm actually really happy I did because I was surrounded with people like all of us who were like-minded, who had a passion. Um, and I didn't share a passion with many others in my high school, you know. Like they were all playing football and all this stuff, and I was the fucking weirdo who loved making music. On his computer screen. Yeah, yeah my biggest friend was my computer. And um, so I switched to the Hermann Roth Academy, and I was surrounded with people. Um, and even though they made completely different styles, it's amazing to have people understand you. And, Instead of talking about like the football game that happened like the day before, you talk about like a new, a new, new sound bank that got released for like uh, any type of plugin. You know, it's, it's it's very inspiring and yeah, that helped me a lot in the school. I am still with it. No, I didn't solve it. I made a new trick. <laughs> well, of course you can see the news and everything, so you can talk a little bit. Yeah. So, so do you have sometimes do you have the time to to dance <laughs> in a club or at a festival to check out other? I'm a horrible dancer. <laughs> uh, yes, I dance. No, um, for me, I, I like to have fun, and what's really important to me is that I can still be more time besides Martin Garrick. So, of course, I, I, I play at a lot of festivals, but whenever I can, I'm also a music fan myself. If I'm on the same lineup as the weekend, I'm gonna go early to the fucking festival and look at the weekend show, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I love music and festivals is an amazing place for everybody's there to have a good time. If, if they have struggles, if they don't feel well, people go to a festival to let that all, leave that all behind, you know. And for that particular moment, focus on the music and being together. Um, I love that. I live for those moments. I live for seeing people generally being happy and together and excited. And, Music makes the world better. It's the, it's the one thing that everybody understands, that everybody could connect to, you know? There's so many things that separates people and the one thing that... It's the same like sports, it unites people. It's, it's uh, universal. Yeah. Universal language. So, yeah. if you're at a festival, there's a chance that you would run into me just raging in the crowd, just having fun. Next, next, to the, uh, next to the music, what are the other things in your career that you're really busy with? Now you're like... Big brand, you have stamped records, studios. What else are you involved in? What? What are you selling? Yes, it's, it's really crazy because it started with just my computer and I, and then uh, so the, the one person that started to help me out with like management things was WhatsApp. And now I think there's over 60 people working for Garrick's, which is it's, it's, it's a responsibility, you know. Suddenly, there's people depending on like what I what I make in the studio, what I do. We have an amazing team at Stamped Records focusing on the releases, and it's 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 a big responsibility, but it's also exciting because it's. I wake up in the morning and like, okay, let's have breakfast. When the people at Stamped are having lunch, I go there, reading out, we play new music, we listen to music, or I'm like, oh, Brooks or Todd Helder or Austrian or. Some guys are in the STEM studios, and then we'll just hang out, we, we catch up, we play each other new music. It's, it's a very inspiring and fun um, environment, you know? And I have two studios at my house, and then at STEM we have nine studios, and I'm, I'm more at STEM because of the energy, because of the people. There's constantly people that inspire me, that get me happy and excited, and it's just fun. It's, it's, it's a little bit like fuck, it's a lot of, a lot of responsibilities, I have to make sure everything goes well. But I have an amazing team guiding me, but 
Yeah, it's crazy. Right now there's like a whole team on the bookings, on the travel, on all the financial stuff, on like the legal stuff, <coughs> and the creative stuff, like A&R wise, if I have a song, or if I have five songs, I send them to the team. And they're like, oh, we love this, we love this, this one, use it for Area 21, or for, or, for, for or, or we could pitch this for another artist. And yes, yeah, it's, it's very nice. And also having stamped now, um, it's just fun. Like, we can, we can release all the music that I like myself and that, that the, the team likes and we build like a family and we're, they're not working for us then, they're working with us. It's like a... It's like a group of friends. <laughs> yeah, and the same thing also with the people that I tour with. They're not working for Garrix, they're part of Martin Garrix, you know. People go see me at, the, at, the, at the, Tomorrowland, that was two days ago at Tomorrowland. And then I'm the guy on stage, but there's like 30 people like controlling lasers, lights, fireworks, and there's so much. And even the people who you don't see in the interviews, etc., but the people who arrange the travel, the transport, the hotels, the pickup, hotel, airport, the crew who goes in my head to program everything. It's like a whole company, and there's like another person who controls all the travel for the crew, and there's another person who controls all the travel for the, uh, the A party, so like. Um, Photograph of video security is it's like a, it's crazy. Oh, you know, I, you was in, you were in a studio at Tomorrowland when we did the dance one live broadcast, and you were so excited just before you got on stage. I think Tomorrowland also, also like one of the highlights of the year, like party wise. Well, for me, meeting with all your friends there. And Tomorrowland was really fun because the first year I went to Tomorrowland, I was uh, in the crowd, just partying, and that was. The year that uh, Animals was the mo most played song at Tomorrowland, and I just remember being in the crowd and then, like David Guetta, Nick Romero, and um, someone else. Like a lot of DJs were playing the song, and like I would be in the crowd with my friends, and I would hear the intro getting mixed in. I was like, "What? <laughs> this is crazy!" And then the year after, they booked me on the main stage, so that transition was really weird. It was, like, this is, this is crazy. How do you prepare for such a big show? Um, like mentally? Uh, mentally, I just don't really think about it too much. Because it's like a, a lot of people. Um, I'm really focused on, on the show and the music. Um, I really want all the Garrick shows of like 95% Garrick music. Because you can see any any DJ play like songs from other artists. But I feel like if people go to see more Martin Garrick show, they want to hear songs that I produced or that I co-wrote, um, or that's also on stamps, you know. But for tomorrow, I always try to do something special. I'm not doing the main stage this year, uh, we're only doing the stamp stage, so I'm really excited. Um, but last year I did like a special intro, um, it's called Yotta I did like an orchestra version. The year before I closed it with pizza. Um, last year, also, uh, last summer, we also premiered High on Life there. So I really use Tomorrowland and Ultra. Um, as the two key moments to let new music into the world. So maybe a stamp festival one day. What are, what are your dreams? I have so many dreams. <laughs> For me, having stamp grow as a brand, having like I want every single person around me to succeed, to 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 have the world, you know. And there's so many amazing people working at stamp. Um, crazy producers and my main goal is just to focus on them because they're insanely, they're insane and amazingly talented and I want to use my platform to boost them into the world. So for me, what would be cool is also to like start focusing on singers. Um, there's a lot of things we want to do, start like scoring movies and everything. We're building like a crazy cinema room and stand where we can, it's, it's going to be crazy, I'm very excited. And also for Martin Garrix, um, I'm really experimenting with love, cool new things, love, cool collaboration with people. I like to surprise people, as I said before, there's some really interesting music coming. It's not far away from Garrix, but it also kind of is because it's so unpredictable. What do you listen to when you're like in the, in the car? Do you, do you switch genres a lot? Are you just driving, driving around? I like to put a playlist on and not think about what to play, like whenever I'm in the car. Um, 
Sometimes it's radio, sometimes it's like a Spotify playlist. I love the option if I find a cool song on Spotify, you press like song radio and it just makes it automatically like it plays like a whole playlist the same vibe. And other times in the, in the car I'm, I'm playing my own unreleased music and I'm just constantly playing it and making notes on my phone like oh, I want to change this, here the vocal is too loud, this impact is too loud, I have to fix this, fix that. And then I go in the studio and I grab this and like oh, this and this. Because it's also nice to hear a song a different sound system than just your your speakers, you know. Yeah, I'll, I'll make videos in the studio and play the song and leave the studio and I play back how it sounds in the video on my phone because not everybody's going to listen to it on like an amazing sound system, you know. And Mark Ronson told that he uh, had to call uh, like for three years to Miley Cyrus to get that sound done. Nothing breaks like a heart. I don't know any like dream people to work with in the future. Like, okay, if I can stock. This guy, this girl, to do a collab, I would certainly make the effort to do it. I do know stalking doesn't help. <laughs> um, but no, I would love to work with um, some really cool bands. I would love to surprise people with like some... Uh, the Killers or... Uh, yeah, or in, like Imagine Dragons, but I also love to work with Pharrell. There's like a whole list. I uh, would love to work with Shawn Mendes. Um, there's a lot of people that I think would be really cool and who knows, we'll see. For me, I, I'll be in the studio, I've been in the studio with some crazy artists, sometimes we made a crazy song, sometimes we, sometimes we didn't make a crazy song. It's, it's, you never know if it's going to work, you know, but the most fun part is trying and, and seeing how things will develop. Some, there's been collaborations, like the one with Mike Young, where um, it's like, fuck, I have no idea how, how, how we're going to combine our sounds. And then while being in the studio together, we managed to find the fusion of both our sounds and just that feeling when you listen back to the final project, you're like, this is why I make music, you know? Um, but yeah, it's a big list of people I'd love to work with. Do you still read the manuals of new plugins that you use in the studio? Uh, I don't really read manuals. I just mess around. Because I feel like from trying and failing, you learn more and to know exactly how something precisely works. Sometimes the mistakes can make a crazy cool sound, you know. Then I save it and then like next song, oh this could be this sound could be cool and load in the sound from the mistake in another song. Did you ever like went out of bed in the middle of the night at three AM, four AM to go to the studio? Yes. Um, very often. Make some coffee. Um skip the night. I just like I think we, we all know this inspiration comes at any moment. I can like I can even hear a new song from like a, another producer like, fuck, this is crazy and it inspires me or I hear a pop song like wow that melody that, that vibe of the chorus is crazy and yeah there's so many things to get inspired from, even from watching movies, from traveling, um, meeting new people, being in the studio with other people, um, playing instruments or using instruments that you've never used before. Um, it's like the, the list is endless. Do you uh, play all your new music to your parents as well before it gets Yeah, I do a group chat with my parents and my sister. And uh, like a lot of it is family stuff, but then also when I have a new demo or something, I send it. And uh, they're like, oh, we love this. We're like, uh, I have to get, they, they don't say they don't like it. My mom says she has to get used to it. It's like a friendly way of saying she doesn't like it. <laughs> So that's a good sign. Yes, yeah, nice. Somebody likes it. Yeah, then you know it's good. Yeah, my sister is always very strict, very like direct. Just sometimes frustrating, but it's also, also, it's also, also what you need, you know. Also very good. You need some honest people around you. If, you, if you if you only have people around you who say yes, 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 this is amazing, you can't grow. And you want honest people around you. Not only with making music, but with life in general. I'm not gonna get like deep uh, life advices, but you want people around you that make you become a better person, that inspire you, and that will always be honest. Even if you do something stupid or out of something like, yo, <laughs> what are you doing, you know? But yes, yeah, it's, it's very helpful to have people around you who are direct, who are honest, and not afraid to say how they really think and what they think. So this is the golden career tip for all our young producers in the, in the house today. One of them. Do you have another one? Uh, another tip. Did you remember? I only remembered through the years. Well, Thais uh, Chesto, 
and I started making music because of him. Um, but over the, the last couple of years, we became close friends, and he guided me a lot, he helped me a lot, gave me a lot of advice. And one of the things that I dealt a lot with, I was like on the internet reading all the comments, and every like 99 people would love it, and one person would say like, "This makes my ears bleed," <laughs> and I would be in bed at night thinking like, "How could this make? Why would that person say that?" <laughs> would like make me frustrated and. Maybe you have a bad day at the dentist. And then, yeah, you don't know. But then um, Ty said, why do you focus on the one person that, that doesn't like it? Focus on the 99 people you get to make happy with, you know? In the end, you're making music for yourself. And, and I was like, you think back, like how you started, why you started. Like, fuck. You're right. It's you can't please everyone. No. It's impossible. No. And that's also nice. It's makes you want to grow and try new things and experiment and combine different sounds and that tip for me did a lot because I was very uh, soft if it came up like on, on my computer screen and I'm an idiot, I'll read everything like people think artists don't read the comments I'm on my Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube and I'm on email forums and their different names I'm just like checking everything I'm a computer nerd, like we all are, you know it's good to stay a nerd as well. Very important. So, uh, hey, we should go some, some questions from the, from the people, from the audience. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do that. So, any people? So, some hands. We have a microphone that's been thrown. Is that it? dangerous? It's a microphone box. Crazy. Uh, hi. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, uh, how do you balance your private life with your music life? You need some private time with your family. Uh, how do I balance it? Yeah. Um, it's for me the number one thing in my life is family and friendship. You know, and, um, I'm really uh, blessed to have a supportive family, so they travel with me a lot. Um, and also, uh, for me to have a good balance, I think we've learned it over the last couple of years, really by trial and error. We book a tour. At the end of the tour, I was like, fuck, I miss home, or, sorry, I feel like, Shh, I really miss home, or I really miss making music, um, I miss being in my own bed, you know, and then the next tour we book, we book less dates, and I think right now we found the perfect time, perfect balance between touring, making music, family time, and it's, it's crazy, because sometimes you think, like, oh, we have to book like this and this week in the studio, but if I don't feel good, like, you won't get good results out of me, or like different sound, different weird sounding things. And with the support from the team, and also because my team knows me so well, um, <coughs> I don't even have to say anything, and they know exactly how I feel based on how I, how my face looks, basically, you know. And I'm very blessed and lucky to have an amazing team around me, um, also on tour that guide me and that um, help me make the balance perfect. I like the microphone. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it. nice one. <laughs> uh, if you know it started zero again, uh, no connections, no money, no team, just the knowledge you're having at the moment, what would you do to get where you are at the moment uh, again? I would first spend a lot of time in the studio, making like um, four or five songs, like um, just crazy songs, songs that, that, that I know people would be like, whoa melody or chorus, like I haven't heard something like it yet, and then I would just start going to things like this, I would start networking, I would start to expand my network, I would go, like, what, what I did when I started, I was like, I went to Mysteryland, and my friend had a stage there, so he got me all access pass, and I went there with my USBs, I gave my USB to Fred LeGrand, he never responded. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, you know, you want to... Um, for me, I, w I would focus on it. I would make, focus on making crazy music and expand my network and trying to get my music to the right people at the right time. Okay. But not spend too many okay. hours on behind your computer like emailing and stuff. Also, make sure your main focus is still music. Hi, uh, my name is Victor Popovich. I'm in Florida. I represent Alex Ravi. 
question for you. Obviously, you work um, with your management team. You've come a long way. You have been at the top for a very long time. Um, do you currently have a mentor, someone like a sounding board who you always go to kind of to brainstorm and, and talk about your career? It's, 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 what's, uh, what's this right there is my, my manager since day one, um, and Steven, uh, and of course my biggest mentor is my father, like, like I brainstormed him about things, uh, and I'm, I'm great friends with Thais, uh, especially in Brosso, um, and even without noticing it, they're mentoring me, like just looking at things they do, things they say, um, it's not like I'm asking questions every day, like, well, how should I do this, how should I do that, but from getting to know them, seeing how they handle certain things, how they handle certain situations, you also there, you know. Hi, um, can we expect an album in the new future? <laughs> um, what's it just told me to not... <laughs> no. uh, yes, um, I said this in an interview two days ago, I can release the three albums now, but I really want to have the lead up to the album correctly. I'm doing a new single in April that I'm really excited about. Um, and then trying to find the right features for the next single. And then the idea is to drop an album. But I'm also like, fuck. Should it be like house? Should it be like more pop? Should it be more like... Because also <coughs> last ADE, I released um, five songs. Uh, <coughs> Garrick's 128 High Energy Club songs. And stuff like that, it's not an album, but it also allows me to put Garrick's music out. So we, we like, the, the music is there. Right now we're just trying to find cool ways to share it with the world, you know? Hi, uh, I have a question. Do you have a collab with Orwell, and will you ever release it, if um, you have one? I did a song with him like six years ago, five years ago, called Music Box. Um, it's finished, but uh, I don't feel the passion that I had at the time in making that song. You know, I like I love the 128 big room stuff. It's, it's, I'm not gonna bash what is happening right now, but it's sounding so much the same. And that song sounds like something that. Like you only hear Garrick's in the break melody, but I want I want the whole song to have like emotion and euphoric. So either one option would be to use the break melody of the hard rock collab and then do a different drop. But I'm also like, there's so many songs that I still have to finish. Um, I don't know, maybe. But we have a we have a song together, just not with this. <laughs> Hey, what time? Uh, hey. Are you taking internships at Stanford? Uh, yes, we have an intern right now. Um, I don't know exactly how many until when it has happened for all that stock was. <laughs> um, no, but we're constantly at Stanford looking for, for, for new people to help out at the studios. Because we have Stanford Recording Studios and Stanford Records. And Stanford Records has grown at such a quick pace that we, like, we're constantly trying to expand the team. Um, so yeah, uh, just like keep an eye on the on the website, also on the recordings website, and who knows, maybe at the right time we look for someone and like, oh, I can do this, uh, or send an email. Like I have uh, someone who's helping me a lot. Yeah, his name is Brandon. He sent an email. Uh, oh no, he sent a handwritten letter to the office, and like, fuck, this is cool, and was very motivated, and he's been working with us now for four years, so. We're always looking for like people who think ahead, and and we think you're a great fit of the team. Well, you'll be part of it. Wanna go for the back now? I'm a time. Well, I know you said that you uh, produced a lot of music uh, and gave it to other people because you already have so much other stuff to release. Which songs are there uh, that are released that we don't know is from you yet? Uh, <laughs> uh, 
have to, I cannot say all the songs, but um, one song that I helped on was uh, Waiting for Love with Avicii. Um, uh, there's some, some songs on STEM that I helped with in the background. There's some songs that I helped with where you can see me in the credits. Um, if you do research on the internet, you can find all the writing credits of songs and then suddenly you see Martin Gharis. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect this. So, um, yeah, just research and you'll find it. <laughs> Very relaxed with all the music that's coming out. 
and um, yeah, that's it. I'm just, I'm, don't be worried about it, guys. What's your favorite plugin? What's my favorite plugin? Um, well, right now I love Alter Boy. It's um, you could basically make like a voice. Like you could change the form. Into this, you could. It's like uh, it just sounds cool. It sounds weird. You could put it on any type of vocal. And as you know, I, I use a lot of vocal chops. Um, this could make like a vocal sound like. Super crazy. Also for Area 21, we use this plugin a lot. Um, yeah, Alta Boy, super crazy. Nice catch. How much time do you spend on average on a new track or project? Um, it depends. Um, I also mix and master, as far as you can call it mastering, uh, the songs myself. So. Depends, like 20 to 60 hours. Right now, I'm, I'm supposed to finish the new single this week, and I think in, I'm in like version 40 something, um, and I'm still not happy with it. So, uh, and sometimes there's songs that goes really quick. I'm like, oh, wow, it's crazy, it sounds good. And sometimes I'm like, it's not where I want it to be yet. But that's the thing, every song is different. Some genres, it's easier to produce. Um, so I'm armed, so it's just different. <laughs> And like, it definitely was the first thing after the first show, and I was, I was, I felt shit about it, you know. Like, there's so much time and, and love put into the show. And people go to a show to have a good time, to leave their worries behind, and then if you're a fucking dickhead who takes it away from people by pepper spraying them because you're stealing, you're, you're, you're sad, you know. People are there to have a good time and don't. Don't take advantage of it. Don't. If you're still, it's one thing. Maybe you don't have it financially that good. There's a lot of things that could, people might want to steal. But if you fucking ruin people having a good time, then you're really fucked up in that. So it definitely hurt me. <laughs> I was like, it frustrated me. Uh, my question is, what do you think in five years? How does the EDM look like? What genre is going on in five years? Is it more like future bands, house? I don't, I don't know. The thing with electronic music right now is the moment something cool happens, everybody's gonna do it. And I kind of don't like that. But it also makes sense that it's happening. For me, when I'm, I don't know where EDM is gonna be in five years from now. I do know what I'm gonna do. And it's just having fun making Garrick's music. And if I feel like making um, like a relaxed song like Ocean, I'll make a song like Ocean. If I feel like making like a euphoric stadium song like No Sleep, I'll, I'll make it. I will. I will not be. Um, uh, I will not be distracted by what everyone else is doing. I will be more Garrick's, and I feel like that's also why why things are right now still going going good. Don't think too much about what you should make, just make whatever you feel like. Uh, hi Martijn. Uh, why then do you think there are so many successful Dutch producers? So what is different in the Netherlands than maybe in other countries? I have uh, asked this question so often, I have no idea. Um, what I do think is in the Netherlands people are very 
support is very friendly. Like, um, there's some other countries, I'm not going to say it, but there's some DJs from certain countries, they're from the same country, and they fucking hate each other. And, and I feel like the Dutch, there's like, everybody's cool with each other, and there's no, of course there's competition, but I don't see them as competitors. I see them as people who have the same passion, who, who also get to make people happy with their music, and might not be my cup of tea, the music, but I respect them, and I respect that they get to make people happy, you know? Um, I don't know how it is that quality-wise, the Dutch is, is really crazy, but I do think that definitely the support and the brothership that there's with the Dutch DJs is what's very helpful, and also um, the reason why it's going well with the Netherlands. high, um, which is, of course, gives me nerves, you know, but then the moment I'm on stage it turns into adrenaline and a focus, but I won't be satisfied until I leave the stage and I'm like, okay, fuck, I gave everybody a great night, everybody was happy, I saw people in tears, the goosebumps, like, you know, and then the nerves go away, then I'm like, okay, tonight is great, and then the next day I do it again somewhere else, but... I feel like being nervous is good means you care and I really want every single show to be not only musically next level, I want it to be visually like crazy lights, crazy lasers, um, I want it to be an experience, you know. Two more questions. <laughs> hey Mark. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you for inspiring me and uh, thank you for giving me power when I'm feeling that. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. You know, it's really amazing. I, I hear messages like this, but this, these are the messages that make me inspired, make me feel good, that make me want to run back directly right now to the studio and, and continue, you know. And a lot of people think there's a big gap between like, uh, artists and fans, but the smaller that gap is, the better, you know, the, the, like I, it's up to me to drink a beer later, but like I really want people to not look up, I want people to like, like, yeah, I want, I, want, I, want, I, want, I want to unite people, I don't want the separation, I want people to think like, oh fuck this, you know, and yeah, I love what you said, thank you, I'm happy I get to make people happy, that's why I make music. Have a last question for our youngest guest. Hey. Wait, uh, have you have tips for beginners? Uh, yeah, you have tips for starters. Um, it sounds cheesy, but enjoy it. Have so much fun doing it. Don't overthink it. Don't think too complicated. And if you think too much about what you have to make or what people want to hear, it takes away your creativity, you know? You should go in the studio and, and do what feels good, do what you want to make, do what, like, Put out what you have inside you, you know? Don't let your art be judged or like be controlled by others. You are you and no one no one else in the world is going to be you because it's all in your head, you know? And I feel like for everybody who starts out, sometimes there will be moments you're like, fuck, why, why am I doing this? It's not working out, I'm not feeling well. Sometimes your parents are like, what? Get away from the computer or your homework or whatever, you know? Um, just have fun and, and, and do what feels good. Don't think too much, don't worry too much, and enjoy every second. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Garrett.